We saw the first real impact of Brexit this week when Tesco stopped stocking Marmite. Like Marmite, people seem to either love or hate the EU. 52% of Brits voted to leave it earlier this year. Coincidentally, survey shows that exact same 52% of Brits hate Marmite, probably because it's black. Anyway, the Brexit <laughs> debate goes on, with Theresa May saying she can negotiate with Brussels without consulting Parliament, but rebel MPs disagree, and rightly so. I mean, it's just like a divorce. You don't just split up and file the papers the next day. It can take years of negotiations to decide exactly what the terms should be. So, let's try and explain all of this, like you might explain a messy divorce to a traumatised child in a story we like to call... Daddy Rabbit Takes Back Control. You see, Daddy Rabbit has been unhappy living with Mummy Rabbit for some time. Even though Mummy Rabbit does all the housework and cleaning and looks after the children, and all Daddy Rabbit has to do is contribute a little bit of housekeeping, Daddy Rabbit still thinks he could do better on his own. So, he tells Mummy Rabbit he wants a divorce. He can't wait to move into his new bachelor pad so he can start having it away with loads of other rabbits like Indian, Chinese and American ones. <laughs> he won't have to put up with all Mummy Rabbit's dopey rules about the shape of his carrots anymore and he'll still get to see the kids who, in this scenario, represent the single market. <laughs> but it turns out things aren't as simple as Daddy Rabbit thought and suddenly he's up to his rabbit ears in expensive lawyers who, as we can see here, are represented by Squirrel Nutkin. <laughs> They're asking him loads of questions about mortgages and childcare and the cost of acorns, and he realises he hasn't got a fucking clue about all the jobs that Mummy Rabbit's been doing for him. What's more, Mummy Rabbit is jealous, and in her rage, she decided to use his children as capital in their negotiations. So all his plans of no strings attached access every other weekend are slipping right through his paws. All of a sudden, Daddy Rabbit. His life is falling apart. Now he's living in a shit bed sit where he has to do all his own housework. What's more, none of these Indian or Chinese or American rabbits that Daddy Rabbit was planning on fucking will give him the time of day because <laughs> it turns out they're only interested in him when he was still married to Mummy Rabbit. Oh, and I forgot to mention that the Rabbit family runs a company selling vegetables to all the other animals in Sylvania and now they're all buying them from Mummy Rabbit because Daddy's prices are too high, partly because he's... Expensive new taste in alcohol. <laughs> also, then there's the Labour Party, represented by this hamster family here. There's Jeremy. Uh, they've been oblivious to all of this because they've been having a noisy domestic the whole time. Haven't heard anything about the rabbit divorce. So they've been too busy throwing sunflower seeds at each other. And also, the mother is planning on eating her own children, which is something hamsters do, apparently. Anyway, there you go. Next week, I'll be explaining the war in Syria via the characters out of In the Night Garden. <laughs> uh, panel, when you all voted for Brexit, did you know they would take away our fucking Marmite, Louisa? No, I had no fucking clue they'd take away our Marmite. I'm quite disappointed about that. It's another thing, isn't it, to add to the list. This is a decision which, despite the 52-48 split in the vote, actually, with the turnout, it was only about a third of voters in the UK voted for this. Mm. And it's being uh, enacted by a woman who was elected by one other woman who was arguably mentally incompetent. So what we got is a situation where someone chosen by a mentally incompetent person is having to do what a third of the country wants them to do, and the other two-thirds don't know what the hell's going on. That is a scary way of putting it. Um, Sean. Yeah. Um, as Sean, who's very confused, mate. Yeah, well, tell uh, me how you Danny Rabbit. How did you feel about Brexit generally? Shit, mate, really. You know what I mean? I'm sort of still hippie. I think we should all sort of be one mm. and all sort of love each other and work together in this great big world. Even the Spanish? Yeah, even Spanish, yeah. Fair enough. Well, Louisa, at what point during the negotiations do you think Brexit voters are going to realise that leaving the EU really wasn't worth all the fucking hassle. I think they realised in the first couple of days when it came out that the NHS billboard was a great big fat lie. I think that's what a lot of people thought was going to be the, the big difference, that they wanted to see that investment back. And as soon as that went out, I think a lot of people were like, oh, shit, actually, what's, what's gone wrong here? And it's hard, isn't it? Because I remember posting on my Facebook page when it happened. I was like, oh, we're so stupid. And so many people were offended by me saying that they're stupid for voting to leave. And then within a week, they're like, no, you're right. It was stupid. We weren't informed properly. 
what the fuck are we doing? But there was a lot of people, Sean, who just thought it would be great because they were really had a problem with immigrants. Yeah. And they thought that the day after the vote, every foreigner would leave the country. Yeah. So they, they feel short-changed now, don't they? Just a little bit, yeah, because yeah. we've still got foreigners in the country. All over the place. And now they're wondering around why we've still got foreigners in the country. Yeah. It's funny, isn't it, laughing at the racists who have still got foreigners but have been deprived their marmite. Yeah, and also the fact that Boris currently, in less than four months, already owes the NHS £5 billion. Mm. So perhaps one day they can take him to court and get the money out of him. 